At Direct Service Overhead, we know how much trust you put in the individuals who have the privilege of working on the components of your home. We understand that a broken garage door is the last thing you want to be worried about, and most of the time, doors break at the most inconvenient times. Our professionally trained technicians service 24 hours a day, and our high cycle parts are guaranteed to make a noticeable impact on your garage door without putting a damper on your wallet. If you're looking for need of assistance maintaining your current garage door, our team has the experience and expertise to deliver the results you deserve. Give Direct Service Overhead a call today or visit us online to learn more. All right, three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans, SEC fans everywhere? Welcome to the one and only Big Trail Network YouTube channel. I'm trying to figure out why there's a roll of toilet paper uh, in my office. In my <laughs> Someone's got the sniffy sniffs. Someone's got the snuffles. My wife does use this computer for her work and uh so i guess she was in here i oh, pray to god that's what this is for um <laughs> all right arkansas gets the dub 45 to 3 down in little rock i'm gonna say this first off uh i know we had at least one person in discord in our discord in the ptn discord that said that the crowd got really loud off that parody Punt return for a touchdown. By the way, tip of the cap to special teams. For the most part, outside of getting the expected week-to-week -week flags when the uh, either punt coverage or, or uh, punt return team is on the field, those happen about every week. But outside of that, they were freaking good today, man. I think we can actually a little a little tip of the cap, if you will. A little, little tip of the cap there. <laughs> Not bad. I'll admit when I'm when I'm uh, well, I'm not wrong. I still think special teams overall this year has been just booty cheeks. I mean, that's what that's what they've been this year. Let's not sit here and kid ourselves. But they're getting better, and uh, today was a huge step in the right direction. I get that it was against UAPB. I get that. I get it. I get it. But look, I'm gonna give credit where credits due. Yeah, UAPB's punt coverage terrible, terrible. Even on the Fair catch, his only fair. I think he had one the the entire game. He he had. It looked to me like at first glance he had like six or seven yards of cushion where he could have just taken off and ran. I felt like Sam or or maybe Fountain. Somebody was like, "All right, hold up. We need to. We want to see our offense actually have to make up a certain amount of yardage on the field. We want to see what our offense can do with these twos and threes." Uh, which, by the way, was not very good. Um, but. We want to see what they can do, and I think that's why. I think that's maybe why. But then the next time they were out, they went ahead and returned it. So I, 
I don't know. Maybe not. But, um, yeah, I, overall, first half went about as about as expected. Second half, about as expected for me. I, I really thought... Uh, I really thought we'd see the backups in a little sooner in the first half, especially when they were up, what was it, 31 to nothing, and KJ still comes out. And I'm like, look, KJ is a runner first. He's an RPO run guy. And we know they're going to, he's either going to hand the ball off or probably try and take off and run with it. Why do you want to risk that with a 31 to nothing lead? I don't quite understand that and someone had even said someone texted me who was at the game and said they thought they saw KJ hobbling around a little bit but then he corrected himself and said that it was someone I, I forgot who he said it was I, to be honest with you I, I only glanced at the notification I didn't actually read the whole text uh my bad I, but anyways he saw someone hobbling and it wasn't KJ um I, I was, uh, you know, again, Rocket Sanders, we saw him carry the ball, what, in the third quarter. I don't want it, to be honest with you, I'm okay with, and I get that TJ Hammonds fumbled that ball in the third quarter, but I'm okay with that. Like, But then we, we didn't see him again after that. Uh, you know, would have wouldn't have bothered me if they wanted to give the ball to Oglesby or to maybe some of the younger backs. They, get, they started handing the ball off to A.J. Green. I'm going to tell you something. The uh, twos on the offensive line, I didn't see who they all were. I thought I saw Crawford. I thought I saw Jalen St. John out there. Uh, not too impressed with what I saw from the twos, the uh, backup offensive linemen. They couldn't get any push. And don't give me this. Well, they still had their ones. Dude, It come on. It's UAPB. Like, their ones wouldn't make the the, the three deep anywhere in in – on Arkansas's roster. You can't give me that. Uh, they just couldn't get pushed. And I think some of that is some of the position changing going on up front on the offensive line. Um, and they're still just not as, they're just not as deep there as, as they really thought they were. And I thought they were a little deeper. Now going into next year, we'll see where they're at. I'm not, we can't take this as a sign of things to come because we all know that's, that's not how things are, right? Like you have an entire off season to get better. We'll see where they're at. Going uh, coming out of fall camp next year, we've already got people predicting wins and losses for next year, and I'm like, man, you guys can go down that road if you want. I'm not, I'm not here to stop anybody from doing that, but I'm gonna wait like I do every year, especially since doing this show. I'm gonna wait till after fall camp, and even then, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know until you actually get to see the product on the field like five weeks into the season. You know, which is why I'm a big fan of let's not do a preseason poll. Let's wait till after week four before we start ranking teams. And clearly, that's uh, that's been a pretty this year's been crazy. OU did they end up getting out of that game? OU was trailing Kansas for like three quarters. Kansas, they were trailing Kansas, top five team in the country out of the Big Twelve was struggling against KU. I think they ended up winning. We'll go down scores here really quick. Let's pull up scores and we'll get into the game. Navy, who's one in five, by the way, giving Cincinnati a ball game, twenty-seven to twenty at the moment. Remember, since he's number two in the country, this is why they don't belong there. Now they may find a way to win, but Navy is, after all, one in five. Uh, Michigan struggled early on with Northwestern. I think it was it was like ten to seven at half. They ended up, Michigan just went off. Again, you're talking about 3-3 three and three Northwestern. Not exactly a great team. 1-2 and two in Big Ten. Michigan gets the win there, 33-7. to seven. Illinois and Penn State tied. It's a tie ball game with 19 seconds left to go, 10 apiece. Uh, Wake Forest, 63-49 over Army. Wisconsin and Purdue just kicked off. Yeah, it looks like Oklahoma pulled away a little bit. 35-23. to 23. They scored 21 fourth quarter points to Kansas' six. Uh, Oklahoma State's going to play Iowa State tonight. That's always an interesting game. Iowa State is kind of LSU's, or excuse me, is is kind of Oklahoma State's LSU. Like no matter who's better in this game, you just it's really hard to it's really hard to pick. Iowa State four and two, they're two and one in Big Twelve. I don't want to take Iowa State because I have watched them a little bit and I wasn't too impressed. But a part of me wants to take Iowa State simply because they play Oklahoma State really well. LSU, Ole Miss. That is a huge game. That's about to kick off, actually, like any minute now. Clemson-Pittsburgh tonight. 
that'll be interesting to see. You've got a four and two Clemson team taking on a five and one Pitt team, Oregon, UCLA, Tennessee, and Alabama tonight at six o'clock. Why does that get to six o'clock? Like who cares? Like, Alabama, although Alabama is not the Alabama of old, they're not. I don't even know if they belong. I'll be honest with what I've seen. I'm not sure they belong in the top five, but they should beat Tennessee pretty easily. And then, of course, the 7-0 and UTSA. You know who's coaching them, dudes. You know who their OC is, Trailer and, and Barry Lunny. 7-0, and 3-0 and in the CUSA, in the Conference USA, taking on Louisiana Tech. With the beginning of the year, a lot of people thought would be really good. I think Louisiana Tech has uh, run into some injury issues, but who has it at this point in the year? But they are two and four, but UTSA, a program first at seven and oh, they're going to probably be eight. No, but it's conference USA. So you never, you never know. Ohio state and Indiana, and then USC, Notre Dame, South Carolina, Texas A&M, NC state and Miami. Those are all the games that are left. Uh, Appalachian state did get an upset on Wednesday on October 20th. Uh, 30 to 27. I wouldn't have picked that. I would have taken Coastal Carolina. In fact, I think I did. All right. Uh, we've had some super chats. Let me scroll up here. Super chats will always take priority. John Haas says, Love you, sugar. <laughs> I'm going to get some sleep. Whooping suey. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, scrolling down here just a minute. Uh, bup, 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 bup. James Whittington with a $20 super chat. I appreciate that. No comment, though. Oh, you pulled it out. <laughs> this is Austin. Do me a favor, guys. Like the video. Like, 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 like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We just continue to. We're in the green like every week in new subscribers. It's great. I appreciate you guys. The And I love how people who, who come out and they admit, okay, Ty, you caught me. I'm a creeper. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a creeper on certain channels. Even on Twitch, I'm a creeper. You won't hear me say much unless it's a Razorback game. Um, nothing wrong with it. But I love that people are coming forward and they're like, yeah, I don't really say much. I don't interact a whole lot, but just know that I'm here and I created a YouTube account just so I could sub to you, Ty. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for that. Um, all right. So we also need to give a shout out to, of course, PT and uh, Patreon subscribers. We're hanging on at 20. I've never had 20 in a full month. That would be the most. That is incredible. Much love to the Patreon supporters. If you're thinking about it, if you want to join, there's a link provided for you down below. Of course, a shout out to the sponsors, Direct Service Overhead, who operate out of Central Arkansas and out of NWA. They will repair and or replace your garage door, uh, and you could check out their link provided for you. If you have any questions, there's a phone number provided for you there. Travis Ford is in our chat. He's actually, uh, he's that's 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 him. That's Travis Ford. That's the dude that I'm doing business with. He's helped me out along the way, he and his wife. So shout out to Travis. If you mention PTN, you will get 10% off, by the way. Uh, again, if you know a contractor friend, maybe you are a contractor. Maybe you're a builder, whatever. If you if you know someone or, or you need some garage door work, hit Travis and those boys up. They'll hook you up. Again, mention Ty Hudson or uh, PTN and you'll get 10% off. Stated Apparel, our second sponsor located down in Benton. I hope you guys that are down there, if you're still watching this, you'll go by and say hello. Tell them PTN sent you. You'll get 10% off as well, uh, hopefully. No, don't quote me on that, actually. But I know on the website they were. They were doing the 10% off. Tell them PTN sent you. Maybe you'll get that 10% off. But, uh, yeah, they're located down in the uh, in the downtown Bitten area. All their shirts, shirts are made locally, and they're the softest shirts you'll find anywhere uh, in, in period. They're soft, super soft. All right. Okay. Yeah, not too impressed with the twos today. I'm not going to lie about it. I, I wasn't impressed with Malik at all. Uh, look, I know he's got some growing pains. It's part of the process. It's not like KJ came out as a, as a young man a couple of years ago and looked solid. Of course he didn't. Of course he was a – he was a true freshman a couple of years ago. Last year's a redshirt freshman on the road against Mizzou. I thought he looked – it's part of the reason why I thought he would have the kind of year that he's had so far. Um, honestly, he's outshined what I thought he would do. And I also said it wouldn't shock me. I said this at the beginning of the year. I said it wouldn't shock me if Malik gets an opportunity either because KJ gets banged up because we know he's a physical runner – or maybe performance issues. But I did think what we saw at Mizzou was showing us something. He has the ability to operate within this offense at a pretty consistent level. It's just so hard when you're a first-year guy. It doesn't matter if you're a 
third year, fourth year player, it's sometimes it's just it's difficult to operate. Um you know, we still had some other positions. We weren't, you know, we weren't so sure what was going on with the Mike Woods, if anybody would step up there. Some of the things that were outside of his control, I wondered how much they would hinder his game this year. And if I wondered if Sam didn't maybe try something different. There's been no need to. KJ has outshined, I think, everyone's expectations, including my own. Uh, who was it? Someone at 247 had him as the 14th overall quarterback. They're clearly wrong. He's He's up there. I think he's on that. He's got to be on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks in SEC play when you talk about his total yardage. Uh, didn't make – okay, we've got people that are analyzing every single one of his throws, every one of his reads. He's not perfect. Guys, there's very few people who operate uh, the RPO flawlessly as a quarterback. You're not going to always get the right read. You're not going to always hit a guy super accurate. Yeah, he tends to overthrow a little bit. But you know what? Last year he was a sub-60% thrower, passer. Now, again, he had a smaller sample size – compared to this year. In fact, that should actually work against him. As a quarterback, the more throws, the more opportunities for interceptions, incompletions, so on and so forth. He's actually beyond 60%. Now, I don't know. Coming into this game, I think he was hovering somewhere around 63, 62, 63%. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's it's about, you know, that's about where I would have guessed him to, to be at coming into the year, somewhere around 60-plus percent. Did not think he was a, a sub-60% thrower. Uh, and also, you got to keep in mind how many drop throws did we have today? How many drop passes did we have? Warren Thompson by himself, I think he's going to record three today. Obviously, Warren Thompson was not good. And then it got in his head, and then he clearly was just, I think he, I don't want to say he checked out. Of course, he ended up not playing much in the second half. Uh, but, you know, you kind of wonder for, for Warren how much of that was mental. And I think a lot of it was. But if you cut back on half of these drops, they've got to be somewhere in the top four in the SEC and drops. I know uh, Auburn led the league until, of course, they played Arkansas. Go figure. Um, but you take away – let's say you just take away a handful of drops. He's probably around 65 66% on the year. Uh, he didn't have a bad game today. Now, again, I- I'll agree he doesn't always make the right reads. Sometimes he does hand the ball off when he felt like he should have kept it himself and there was a gap there for him to run through, or maybe he should have hit somebody on a short slant route or a, or a hitch route or maybe even further downfield on the fade or go on the outside, and sometimes he misses it. Again, not everyone's perfect. Could he be a little bit more consistent? Sure. But you know what? Uh, they still are the top eight. And I'm going to say this. When you guys come at KJ, I'm like, like, look, man, he's still he's he's got his completion percentage up. Look at his touchdown to interception ratio. Look at what he's done in terms of total yards. This guy is killing it. He's having a phenomenal year, a lot higher than anybody expected. So, I get some of the criticism. The first downs again. I don't know if that's a reflection of Kendall Bryles wanting to establish the run on first down, or if it's always, and I don't think this is the case, or if it's always KJ making the wrong read and hand the ball off, therefore you're predictable on first down. I think it's a mix of both. I do think Kendall wants to establish the run. We did see them throw it on first down a little bit today, but uh, again, this was a a little bit different scenario when you consider who they're playing. Uh, you're an idiot if you're coming at KJ. I, 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 yeah. I think if you're if you're taking shots at KJ at this point, I don't know that you're actually like again. It's, it's okay to criticize. Like, ah, oh, okay, you made a bad read there. Oh, what are you doing, KJ? You made a bad read there. But when we dissect every single throw, or every single play, it's like, all right, now you got to look at the body of work. Let's look at the body of work. He's killing it. And his improvements this year, just from spring. From what we know about early fall camp, go back to the red-white scrimmage, KJ has come a long ways, and he looked pretty sharp in the spring game. And I said to Alex, my neighbor, who he and I both went to the uh, red-white game together. Actually, we went to both scrimmages together, the second and the third. We both said the same thing, especially in that red-white scrimmage. If they operate the offense even 70 80% as efficient as they did in that second spring uh, scrimmage, they're in good shape. And what do you have right now? You've got a top 10 rushing offense and a top 25 total offense. You'd like to put up more points, but uh, it's just that's not that's not happening uh, right now. Even though I really thought today was an opportunity to pad some of those stats, you know, your total points per game stats. And they did a little bit, but not much. Uh, Thompson dropped at least three or two. Being, yeah, he dropped two in the end zone. He did. And again, we have to we have to look at this. This is still a problem for Arkansas. He was the only one that drops. I think they had four drops today. 
without KJ, we wouldn't have a single win. You're probably, I think you're outside of today. And I don't know. We saw how Malik looked. I, I just wasn't that impressed. I wasn't impressed with the with the twos on the offensive line. I thought the twos on defense, we got to see some guys. We saw Andrew Parker. Uh, Chavis was back there. Chavis was back there early. I don't know if y'all saw. He was back there like in the first quarter, the bottom of the first or top of the second quarter. Uh, we we got to see uh, a couple of a couple of youngins on the defensive line. I think the twos on defense, and people were talking about this in Discord. It gives you a little bit of hope, like oh okay, they at least looked a little bit better. Torrin Carter, who's had some moments this year, and and he kind of strikes you as someone who, uh, you know, I remember I vaguely remember his recruiting process. It seems like such a long time ago, but it wasn't. But I seem to remember his recruiting process. People were like, all right, this kid, like. All right, that's a legit pickup for Arkansas. Uh, Carter Carter looked good. I thought Carter did a did a really good job. Ridgeway was kind of I don't know, man. Ridgeway was Ridgeway today. Do me a favor, guys. Share the content, please. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe. Check out all the links provided for you down below. To everyone who's good lord, the donations through PayPal and unbelievable. Uh, I appreciate you guys. You really uh, you guys are rock stars. Thompson would be unstoppable if he could just catch. What's funny is. Coming into this game, I think he only had one registered drop. And then he has three today, and you know that's going to get in his head. I hope this isn't – I hope this doesn't affect him in the long term. We need a solid number two. Malik looks uncomfortable, uh, really uncomfortable every time he's out. He does, Scott. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. He looks so – I don't know, like deer in headlights when he's trying to throw the ball. But when he tucks it and runs – he looks he looks great and you know my dad who's continuing he's he still tells me I think Malik should be moved to receiver or somewhere else. Uh, I'm not going there yet. I'm not there. I'm not about moving him yet. I want to see him develop. You got to give a kid time, let him develop. But he is so fast. You would love to take advantage of that speed one way or another on offense and and like at quarterback you can't run it every single down at least not someone with that frame. Not someone that I mean he's not pushing 240 pounds, right? He's not a 6'3", 6'4", big, durable guy. He's he's kind of like a scat back, a tall scat back running around. Eventually, he's going to get hit, and he's going to be done. He's that kind of quarterback. Of course, you got to take a real good angle and have some speed to do that. Can we beat Mississippi State? Based on what I saw today, I think, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, you can. Do you? We'll have to uh, – well, you know, we we'll be we'll be on that not this week but next week. We'll be talking about that. Some of y'all comparing these college quarterbacks to quarterbacks that are playing on Sundays, I feel like. Um yeah, if you're talking about people going after KJ, I agree. Malik Hornsby, I think today is a day where you go uh we didn't see we didn't see him. We didn't see what we thought we would see out of him and we haven't had we haven't seen him at all this year do what we thought he would do i know he's a redshirt freshman i get that and like i said we need to we need to pump the brakes on trying to move him around already gotta pump the brakes man you gotta let a kid develop you gotta you gotta let a kid develop you gotta let him get more reps you gotta remember kj's freshman year he got quite a few reps and he got some starts and then he went in as a redshirt freshman on the road against missouri uh so he had time right Got to give him time. Got to give Malik. Got to give him some time. They're putting the ball on the field too much today. I don't know if you guys saw that. I think I counted four, four times. They put the, uh, and I might be off by one. It might have been five. They put the ball on the field far too much. TJ Hammonds, who never gets carries, finally gets to come in. And you're thinking, all right, we're gonna get to see, we're gonna get to see him carry the ball at least seven or eight times, right? Nope, nope. Not having uh, Jalen Catalan is gonna. Well, I'll I'll allow that simply, but I, I'm not going to repeat that. Uh, <laughs> let me scroll up here. Let me scroll. KJ is making progress every week. He passes. He passes today. His passes today were on point. Uh, there are there are a couple that you know. I don't know. Uh, only one or two could be nitpicked. He's really good. Well, I mean, that's what you do. You nitpick. You nitpick every play, right? You got. You're supposed to nitpick every single play. But you can say that. Yeah, there were a couple of throws that were a little off or were pretty far off. But he makes up for that because then the rest of his throws are all catchable, right? Um, 
45 to three and somehow one of the more sloppy guys. I agree. It felt really sloppy. You're not wrong. Hog eight, seven. it did feel sloppy. I have to agree with that. Uh, it, it, you know, for whatever reason, it just seemed like in a lot of ways, it kind of went the way I thought that it would. They came out a little, I mean, they, they were on fire on offense for a little bit and then it got real sluggish and then they, you know, they had to settle for the field goal and you're not going to, it's, it's hard to score on every drive against anybody. I get that. You go up, what was it? 17 to nothing. You felt like that drive could have ended with a, well, you felt like every drive could have ended with six. Remember, I said what I say, fifty-two to thirteen. I really thought the backup. I really thought the twos and threes on defense were going to give up a lot of yards, and they didn't. In fact, most of the yards given up today were on the first team. So I don't. I don't know if. Um, I don't know if. I don't know. Every every week they're giving up. They're giving up plays like big plays every week. Doesn't seem to matter who it is. Um, who they're who they're going up against. So in the first half. Dominic Johnson had four carries for 80 yards. He had a 34-yarder from the line of scrimmage. Of course, Traylon Burks did Traylon Burks things. He had two carries for 56 yards and a touchdown. Of course, he would go on to have four catches, 89 yards for a couple of scores in the first half. How about Katron Jackson with that 29-yard touchdown? That is a guy I've been waiting on. I'm ready to see him. I'm ready to see Katron just take over. If it's not Warren Thompson, if it's not Devion Warren, if it's if it's not any of the names that we've talked about week in and week out, I want to see Katron, who was this highly recruited four-star receiver that Texas went after real hard. He grew up a Texas fan. He chose the Hogs. I really thought this guy would be would have a, you know some more shots. I thought today was his day to come out and do that, and he ends up um, with with. Uh, you know, not a huge impact today. Slusher got his first career pick. He now has, what is that, two two takeaways as a redshirt sophomore. He had he had the fumble recovery last year, and then I think this pick, I think he's got two. I might be wrong. It might be three. I know he forced a couple of fumbles last year. He did give up a big play. It happened. I think he got beat on, I think it was a double move. I'm not sure. Uh, and I think he was covering the slot receiver uh, Slusher's kind of hit or miss. You know, again, he's getting used to the position. Uh, they've moved him around. He's fought injuries. Like you're seeing him try to get comfortable at the position. I think once he gets settled in, we shouldn't see that sort of thing happen, but we've seen him now back to back weeks, give up some big plays. And I'm sure Sam Pittman will talk about it. They got to, they got to clean some of those up. Uh, he wasn't the only one. I mean, there were a couple of, couple of plays, um, so some of the first half notes, again, Warren with three drops. Six flags for 41 yards were really the only blemishes in the first half. Uh, too many too many flags at home, in front of a home crowd, and you've got six penalties for 41 yards against UAPB and, and self-inflicted wounds, man. Like, you've got to got to uh, limit those. Defense gave up a couple of big plays in the first half. Crossley had a 28-yard rush, and then Dawkins with a 49-yard reception. And how about Perotti? We're over the blemishes. Let's talk about the bright spot. Special teams. Special teams was a was a bright spot. Four, he had four returns for 147 yards in the first half. That's 37 yards a return and an 80 yarder for a touchdown. Wasn't that the t- wasn't that the tutty? Didn't he have an 80 yard? Wasn't that that went 80 yards? Right. That's incredible. Where have you been, Perotti? Yeah, I know it's UAPB, but still tip of the cap. Um, so yeah, proud of, proud of special teams. You go special teams. You go, um, but, 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 up. the 12 minute cores in the second half were whack. Yeah. So they did. And that was something I have never seen before. I've never seen that. Both coaches agreed in the second half. They went to 12 minute quarters. You know, look, that's something I didn't expect to happen. I didn't even know that was a rule. Our boy John Haas brought that up in Discord, and he was I did not know that was a rule, and he screenshot it and showed us that that is indeed a rule. Trey Williams found that gear he lost a couple of games ago. He looked better. I agree. He looked better. Um, let's see. 
the uh, the paper bag <laughs> as a whole. Uh, bu- 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 DJ for RB one Cadet Hill. Yeah, I agree, man. I've been I've been kind of harping on that for two three weeks now. Uh, I think Tyson Morris is our wide receiver too. Your opinions? He's he's a clutch receiver, and we saw him do this earlier in the year. Where like your passing game is just nowhere to be found, and there he is on a on a fifteen yard hitch route or twenty yard twenty yard throw down the sidelines. Right? I don't know that he's receiver number two. I would say it's looks like Warren Thompson. Got to remember, man. He he's had some pretty good games. Today was the first game where you felt like what happened to Warren Thompson. I think Warren has been your your number two guy. Uh. We lost the second half three to nothing, Marco Leone. Well, you, I mean, yeah, you did, but they weren't trying. Like, they were clearly at their twos and threes in. I think they were, just, I really think they were just trying to get to next week healthy. That's really what that was about. It seems like Malik's, seems like Malik tries to outrun everybody on the field sometimes. I saw that in the AM game, but this, but this isn't high school anymore. It's the SEC. He does, he does kind of, looks like he gets lost. When he's trying to run around, doesn't he? Doesn't he look like he kind of gets lost and he runs around? And we know he's got the ability. Might be the fastest player on the field, no matter who you're playing against. He is quick now. Uh, 80 yards. Yeah, I think you could. It was 80 yards on that punt return. Pittman trying to get that sloppy backup team off the field. He knew it was was going to be ugly. Is it clear now that Smith is running back three or four? Yeah. <sighs> Still drinking, still drinking Sprite for the tummy. Still drinking Sprite for the tummy. Drink some Pepto. You guys ever just tip the Pepto bottle back and just take some glugs? You know, it's like glug glug. Um, I was doing that, doing that last night and today. And like the two don't mix well, FYI, Sprite and Pepto. Um, I thought I thought we would see Jalen St. John and Crawford at the guard spot. What they were, I thought I I know I saw Crawford. Pretty sure I saw Crawford. Now I might. Again, I was. Uh, I don't know if you can, my kids are like right outside the door, being really loud. Uh, I thought I saw them. I thought I. I thought I saw Crawford. I could be wrong. DJ and Rocket are best running backs, definitely. Yeah, and, and Traylon is good. Every once in a while, he'll 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 get you a 15, 20 yarder downfield. I mean, he can. He's capable. You feel like he's becoming like he should be in that same role that TJ Hammonds was in. Like his roles need or his, his carries need to be need to be uh kind of cut back a little bit. And AJ Green, we're starting to see why AJ Green, like, you know, his his he doesn't take care of the ball, he still needs work and pass protect. AJ Green fumbled a kickoff as well. Look a little bit too casual on that. I swear Rocket is our guy. I, I I wouldn't have a problem with either Rocket or Dominic Johnson. I like those two as back and forth like like thunder and lightning. I like that idea. And with a mix of Traylon as the three guy and, and A.J. Green. I think Green has it in him. We saw that earlier in the year. Now, I'm not going to hold anything against him behind that second team offensive line. Goodness, they could not get pushed, and that was scary. Perotti faster than I thought. Well... Yeah, but it's easy to look fast against an FCS opponent. I, I really don't know what his forty time is. I've never heard I've never heard anyone brag about his speed before, but he certainly looked faster. I'll say that. He did look. We finally got to see the guy return some punts. But it helps when your punt coverage when, when the opposing team's punt coverage is trash. Green is uh green is good as a flex. Defense is absolutely atrocious, says Red Hog. Lack of depth shows after the Texas A&M wins and players started getting hurt. Cadet Hill says the other punt return looked substanti- substantially faster. AJ was getting pissed behind that second string line, couldn't get any holes. I'm telling you, man, you could, I think you could see it on his face. He was like, come on now, you give me, got to give me some gaps to run through. He was shaking his head. I thought I saw that. So I'm not going to lie to you, in the bottom of halves, t- typically what I'm doing in the final four or five minutes of the first and second half, I've got my, I'm typing up notes. That's what I'm doing. So it's, my eyes are on the screen for like a minute and then I'm back down looking at my laptop tap, typing up notes. 
So some of those I didn't see, but uh, I did see, I think it was the end of the first half. You could see like the guys were just, it seemed to me like they were ready to get off the field and go home. That's why it felt to me like they were done. This game was so out of hand. And I think that was part of the reason why Sam was like, all right, we're done here. We're kind of already over this. We want to just head to the, we want to head to the back to the hill. And, uh, and they both agreed on 12. Thank God they did the 12 minute quarters. Thank God. Is KJ a more capable runner than Malik? Uh, that's a really tough question because it's a loaded question, but it's, it's one that seems obvious that Malik with all that speed, but there's a difference between a fast runner and a capable runner. There's a difference between someone who can hold on. Well, KJ did fumble today, by the way. You know, he's fumbled like three times, three maybe four times this year, I think, and we've recovered all but one in the end zone for the safety against Auburn. But yeah, there's a difference between a fast, speedy guy, right, and then a guy that's got vision that knows when to tuck it and run, who's a big physical runner. I don't know. I I, I would be guessing at his forty time at this point. I have no idea. And I bring up Matt Jones all the time, but who the hell thought that guy would run a four three seven forty? Um, and at the NFL Combine, laser time. That wasn't hand. That was laser timed. Who would have thought that, right? I don't know what KJ forty is. Malik, you feel pretty comfortable in saying he's at least a low four four, high four three guy. And for a quarterback, that is that's beyond bla- that's like that's like the speed of light for a quarterback, right? There's some really good dual threat guys in the NFL that drop four six forties, right? I, you know, we we sometimes get it mixed up. There's a difference between a forty time for a running back, for a receiver, and to a quarterback. They they're different kinds of speeds there, um, and what they can do with that. Burks, I think, is the more capable runner simply because of his size and the physicality that he runs with. Again, it's a it's a complicated uh, question to answer. Who's more likely to score 80 yards downfield with a blocker in front of him? I would probably say Malik Hornsby because of his flat-out, unbelievable speed of light kind of speed that he has. He's so fast. But can he do it on a consistent basis, be effective with his feet and with his legs? Not like KJ. It's it's two different quarterbacks. Now, maybe that changes over the course of the next few weeks. I don't know. Maybe that changes in the offseason. But – having your eyes downfield, knowing what to do with the football, being able to tuck the ball and run and taking the right gaps, making defenders miss. Malik can do that. No doubt. Malik is capable. He can take off down the field and score, but we've not seen him do it consistently. And we've not seen him be as effective against weaker opponents. By the way, we've not seen him be as effective as KJ when he has the ball in his hand. So I would argue KJ is the more effective runner. Speed is overrated. Jerry Rice is a 4-7 guy. It's complicated, right? Yeah, they are. 40 times are 40 times mean different things to different positions. Uh who was the DN that played for like the, the Colts that ran like a 4-3-8-40 or something? 4-3-6-4. Dwight Free. No. There's a defensive end years ago. I think he played for the Colts, ran like a 4-3-5-4, something crazy. Fourth, and he, and he had a couple of really great years in the NFL. But I'm I'm more anxious, or I'm more concerned about what he can do in terms of like the first five yards. How quick does he get off the line of scrimmage? How much burst does he have? And it is speed can be in. You know, Jerry Rice is one of the greatest receivers, and he ran. Yeah, I think they said he probably. And a lot of his, by the way, his speed was hand timed. It wasn't laser. You didn't have those back in the day. Um, I'm sure he was faster than 4-7 laser time, but not known for his speed. Sometimes it's route running ability for receivers and and what have you and how skilled of a runner. By the way, watch Raheem Sanders and the way that guy runs. You know what? I don't know if anyone else has caught on to this. You could tell the guy is new to being a running back. His limbs, he's running. His legs look like they're flapping around. Wait till he figures out how to run properly. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but the way that guy runs, it seems like he's got his like he's 
he's flapping his wings and he's his body. Mo- he just doesn't look like a real balanced runner. But when he gets that figured out, Raheem Sanders is going to be absolutely dangerous, and he's already dangerous now. Uh, what did Tony say? Oh no, I think next year is going to be Arkansas's year. I like our schedule a lot, and if KJ is doing good, is doing as good this year, I would put him up there of the Heisman race next year. Yeah, again, I'm I'll I'll take the same route with the people that are overly pessimistic, also with the same people that are being overly like. I don't know about that, man. Uh, too soon for me. Too soon to say it one way or another. Malik can run, but we are looking at two years before he has the IQ. So many. He has the IQ. So many bad choices. I. I mean, maybe. Yeah, that could be the case. Skills. That could be the case. I don't know. Um, Dwight Freeney ran a four four. I thought it was a four three eight. It might have been a four four eight. It was something ridiculous for someone that size to run that kind of forty. Uh, I'm telling you, Rocket learns to run, son. I'm, t- he, dude is he's fast as it is, but he he, f- watch him run. Go back if there's any highlights uploaded somewhere. Watch him run, and then watch someone like, I, I don't know any any of the other backs. Go back and watch Alex Collins or Jonathan Williams. Try to compare them to watch their freshman year. Maybe I don't know if you're if you want a good comparison. Um, but he he's he needs you know. I think there's you've got to learn to run, right? And he, he didn't play running back. He played receiver in in uh, high school. So you can kind of tell like he's got to learn how to run with the football out of the running back position. We need to use Malik like the Ravens use Lamar. Um, Let's see, Malik. Malik would be a killer slot receiver, I think, size and speed. I I don't think you're wrong. I'm, I'm not saying he wouldn't he wouldn't possibly – flourish at another position i'm just saying i would like to i would like to um be patient with him before we go move him to another position and then him hitting the portal right i can't believe that was our first punt return since 2011 yeah it wasn't tennessee though i think it was actually kansas state that year so it wasn't in the regular season it was in a bowl game it's the last time they had a punt return correct me if i'm wrong I'm pretty sure that was that's the case. Everyone thinks it was that Tennessee run. I don't think that's accurate. I think it was the Kansas State game. I don't think that Malik can survive being used like Lamar. Yeah, he's not that same size. Uh, he's not that. He's not. He's not built like Lamar is. Um. So, all right. Someone give us a score. LSU's up seven to nothing. I picked in my picks. I picked LSU over Ole Miss. You guys. I think I said it here on the Friday show too. I like LSU. I, I, I maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I, but I think Ole Miss has gotten calls week in and week out. I think it finally it collapses. It it it, it comes to an end. All right. With that, this show is going to come to an end. Uh, I appreciate you guys again, Patreon supporters, sponsors, all you guys in live chat. I do appreciate you. This week is we're not going to do a Wednesday show. We're going to do a Monday and Friday show. Monday we're going to. Take a second look at this game. We're going to have all the stats rolled out. We're going to have everything. We're going to talk about kind of what we witnessed and what we can expect going forward. We're, we're going to do a breakdown. Someone asked in our Discord, and I think this is a good question, does Arkansas, do they have a shot at being top 25, assuming the bottom half or the bottom of the top 25 if they all lose, or can Arkansas sneak in? I'm going to say probably not. Not with a 45-3 to win over an FCS school. I, but I could be wrong. I think they're somewhere around 28th. Um, that they'll receive some votes, but I don't know if they get enough to get in. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to beat Mississippi State, I think, to get back into the AP top 25, and and that might be a tall order. I'm not stri- I, Like I said after the uh, Auburn loss, there's no game coming out of the bye week that to me is a for sure dub, maybe outside of Mizzou. So we'll have to we'll we'll use this bye week to to regroup, rethink some things, and get healthy, which matters the most. So that's right. Go Tigers only this week. That's right. If we go 3-1 and one over the next four, that would be superb if they did. All right, guys, be good. Have a good rest of your weekend. Get some rest, and I'll see you on Monday. All right? Woo Pig Suey. Go Hawks. <laughs>